Hello, Internet! So nice to see you! What if there was a trick that can make your jazzy chord progressions and solos sound jazzier, and your classical or neoclassical chord progressions and solo sound more classical or neoclassical? Wouldn't you like to learn it? Well, this trick exists, and we are covering it right now. It can be applied to both chord progression and leads, even when you improvise, so it's easy enough that you can apply this in real time once you practice with it a little bit. So let's get the basic down first, and so we can see how to apply first this trick to chord progression, and then later in the video we apply this trick to leads. First of all, you need to know about diminish seventh chords. Diminish seventh chords are chords of four notes, all spaced three half steps from each other. For instance, a C diminished chord, it's a chord of four notes that contains the note C, and then the note that is three half step above that, so E flat, and then the note that is three half step above that, which is G flat, and then the note that is three half step above that, which is A. And notice that if I go three half step above A, I find C again. Those chords are super easy to play. Here are a couple of shapes for those chords on guitar. This chord I just played can be called a C diminished seventh chord, but also an E flat diminished seventh chord, a G flat diminished seventh chord, and an A diminished seventh chord. All those four names refer to the exact same chord played in the exact same positions. The second thing you need to know is how diminished seventh chord resolve. Diminished chords, as you can hear, are dissonant. And so they need to resolve into another chord. Now, every diminished chord can resolve in several different ways. For instance, the C diminished seventh chord that we have seen a moment ago can resolve to those following chords. I'm gonna list them first, and then I'm gonna tell you what is the reasoning behind it. A C diminished chord can resolve to D flat major, D flat minor, E major, E minor, G major, G minor, B flat major, and B flat minor. That is, a C diminished chord can resolve to any major or minor chord that has a root one half step above any of these notes. So you see, for instance, the notes in the C diminished seventh chord are C, E flat, G flat, and A. One half step above C, I have D flat, so this chord can resolve to D flat major and D flat minor. One half step above E flat, I have the E note, so the C diminished seven chord can resolve to E major or E minor. The next note in the C diminished seventh is G flat. A half step above that, I have the G note, so this chord, C diminished seven, can resolve also to G major and G minor. And finally, the last note in the C diminished seventh chord, it's A, a half step above that, I have a B flat, so the C diminished seventh chord can resolve to a B flat major or a B flat minor. This may look really complex in theory, but on the fretboard it's super simple. You just need to play a major or minor chord that has the root one fret above any of the notes of the C diminished chord. So now that we have the basics down, here is the trick. We're gonna take a chord progression, and we're gonna take a super simple chord progression. I want to show you that this trick works regardless of how simple the chord progression is. So we're gonna take C, A minor, F, G, C. Now, here's the trick. Before any chord in this 
chord progression, you can play a diminished chord with the root one half step below the root of that chord. So for instance, after the C chord and before the A minor chord, I'm gonna play this diminished seventh chord that has the root a half step below A. A half step below A, I have a G sharp, so I'm gonna play a G sharp diminished seventh just before A minor. Before the F chord, since the root is F, I go a half step down, I get the note E, I'm gonna play an E diminished seventh chord. Before G, I take the root G, I go down a half step F sharp, so just before G I'm playing an F sharp diminished seventh chord, and before the final C, I take the root C, I go down a half step for B, and I play a B diminished seventh chord. So, here is how it sounds. And warning, this does not sound jazz yet, it's gonna sound classical, because I took a chord progression made only by triads. In a moment I'm gonna make it sound jazz too, okay? So here is how this chord progression sounds with the addition of the diminished seventh chord. There are many ways to play those chords around the fretboard and to choose the best voicing so that this chord progression sounds better, or at least different. If you want to know more about chord voicing and voice leading, and how to use them to make your chord progression sound better, I do recommend you have a look at my course Complete Chord Mastery, where I teach you everything there is to know about that. But let's go back to our trick. Now a little note about rhythm here. Let's say the original chord progression had one chord per bar, then when you add the diminished chord, you have two options. Either you start adding more bars so that any original chord has one bar and every one of the new diminished chord gets an extra bar, so now the chord progression goes from four bar to eight bar in total. Or the diminished chord can steal half a bar from the chord before that. That is, for instance, that this G-sharp diminished seventh chord will be played in the second half of the first bar before the A minor chords come in, and it will steal half of the first bar from the C major chord. Now notice also that in this case I apply this trick to all the chords in the chord progression, but you can apply it only to one chord or to some chord in the chord progression, you don't have to apply it to all the chords. It's up to you if you apply this to all the chords, some or just one chord in your chord progression. So again, a progression that starts with triad chords will just sound more classical. So what if instead I start with a chord progression that uses seventh chord? Well, tell you what, let's take a very similar chord progression, I'm just gonna change one chord to make it sound more in style, and let's add all sevenths. So right now I have a C major seventh, A minor seventh, D minor seventh, G seven, back to C major seven. <laughs> I am playing some very plain chord voicing here. I just want to make you hear how this trick works again for very simple chord progression. You can complicate this at will. Let me add the diminished chords here. So just before A minor 7th I put a G sharp diminished 7th. Before D minor 7 I'm putting a C sharp diminished 7th. Before G7 I'm putting an F sharp diminished 7th. And again before C major 7 I'm gonna put a B diminished 7th. And again you can do this for all the chords or for just some chords. Let's play this and let's hear how this sounds. In a moment we're gonna see how to apply this to a lead rather than a chord progression, but first of all let me remark that by changing inversion and voicing of those chords, both the original chord in the progression and the diminished seventh chord, you have a lot more options on how to make this chord progression sound. Again I like the time to show and explain all those options here, but have a look at my course Complete Chord Mastery to know more about that. Now what about leads? 
Well, here's a simple example. Suppose we're gonna take the original chord progression C, A minor, F, G, C, and rather than playing it as chords, we play it as arpeggios, like some neoclassical players or shredders do in general. So in this case, the chord progression will sound pretty much like this. So what do we do here? We do the exact same thing as we did on the chords before, we just put those extra diminished chords in between so that they resolve the next chord in the progression. Now again, I'm not playing those diminished chords as chords, I'm playing them as diminished arpeggio. Here is a possible shape for a diminished arpeggio. So my chord progression now sounds this way. So as you can hear, this gives a nice neoclassical flavor to this little lead. And of course, if I were to play this with 7th chords arpeggios instead, and if I were to play this shuffling those notes rather than playing them straight, then it will sound jazz. But you don't have to start with a lead made only of arpeggios to use this little trick. You can simply play the diminished arpeggio just before the chord change. So for instance, again, if you have the chord progression C, A minor, F, G, just before the change to the A minor, so when you are still in the C bar, in the first bar, on the beat number 3 or number 4, you can just put in there a G sharp diminished 7th arpeggio and then land on a chord note of your A minor chord, or at the end of the A minor bar, just before you go in the F bar, you can play an E diminished seventh arpeggio, and when the chord changes to F, you just land on one of the chord notes of the F chord. The important point if you apply it this way, it's simply to land on a chord note of the next chord when the next chord arrives. If you do that, you can just put in this trick into any of your improvised solo, and it sounds great if you apply it at the right time. I will let you experiment with this concept, the application here are so many that even if I make an example or two, this may end up actually limiting your choices because you try to do what I'm doing, but there are so many possible applications and so many ways this trick can sound that it's best if you just get the trick, sit down and try to apply this to any of your leads. As usual, those are just the basic of this trick, and I'm making only a few examples, and those are just that, examples. This concept can be applied and sound in many different ways. For much, much more, you can check out my courses, Complete Chord Mastery if you're interested in chords and chord progression, and Master of the Modes if you're interested in scale, arpeggios, and improvising. Depending on your focus, one of those two courses will work best for you. Both the courses have been made specifically by guitar players, for guitar players. We do all our theory on the fretboard, and yes, we do these kind of tricks. I show many more examples. We work also on the voice leading, on landing on chord notes, etc., etc. Everything you need to really understand the theory behind the music you like and to make your own music. If you like this video, smash on that like button, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comments, please write them down in the comments, I love receiving your feedback. This is Tommaso Zillio of MusicTheoryForGuitar.com, and until next time, enjoy!